Mike Young is easily one of League of Legends' most liked pro players. Off the rift, he's a humble, quiet kid, one who works really hard and is always seeking improvement. He plays for his team, and he's without a doubt a respectable player. Nobody would tell you otherwise. Mike Young is just one of those pro gamers that you want to see succeed. You cheer for any success that he has because he's just that kind of player and person. On the rift, well, his story is even more interesting. This is a guy that had an absolute blast off to start his career. Mike Young's entrance onto the scene literally could not have started off better for him. He shocked everybody, upsetting the best team in the league, then going to an international tournament where he popped off against veteran players. He would then carry his team Phoenix 1, win Rookie of the Split, and then go on to sign with none other than TSM for the following season. Any League of Legends pro could only dream that their career started the way that his did. The sky was the limit. He was going to change LCS, he was going to be a dominant player for years and years to come, and potentially be listed as one of the best junglers ever when it was all said and done. These events happened in the years 2017 and 2018, so by now, in 2020, we would expect him to have already made a world's appearance, get out of groups, have flashes of greatness, and at only 20 years old, his entire career should start to come together right now, this season, and we should even be discussing if Mike has a chance to take North America far at the World Championship. But if you check on Mike Young now, He's currently the substitute jungler for Team Liquid's Academy roster, and their team is 0-5 in the Academy League. What happened here? Mike Young grew up in Wallingford, Connecticut. This is a suburban town about two hours northeast of New York City, with a population of about 45,000 people. Wallingford is going to be a place that won't see a lot of ethnic diversity. In smaller towns of America, this is pretty common. I grew up in a suburban town in Ohio that has a population right around the same amount as Wallingford, and yeah, in school it was pretty much only white kids. For Mike, being the son of two Chinese parents who spoke very little English, he struggled to fit in with others, drawing him to be more in love with video games rather than playing outside in the cold Connecticut weather. He would often have to help his parents, even at a very young age. They owned a restaurant, and he would find himself helping them with their taxes, working, that sort of thing. But when he did have free time, you better believe he was playing video games. He would start playing League back in 2011, and when Mike was just 13 years old, he would hit Challenger. On top of being just an unbelievable achievement in its own right, the fact that he could do this at 13 years old was mind-boggling. However, despite his great accomplishment, he would also have something else clouding his mind and his thoughts. League of Legends, on top of being a game that he loved and was incredibly good at, he was also using it as an escape from reality. You see, Mike's father was very sick. He was in and out of the hospital, and after a heart attack, it got a lot more serious, and his father would die when Mike was still just in middle school. Losing any family member can be incredibly tough, especially if it's a parent, and anyone out there who's lost any parents must know how this would have made him feel. Being so young can also make it really hard to understand, to fully comprehend the situation and know what to do next. So for him, while it might have seemed unhealthy to other people telling him that he needs to go outside or go do something else, he knew what he needed to do to not only cope with this, but also to pursue some happiness. For the next three to four years, he would grind League of Legends non-stop. He would climb higher and higher on the ranked ladder and hold Challenger every single season, and he'd be on the path to becoming a professional player. But now with his father gone, it was time for him to take this shot, to take this chance, to leave Wallingford behind and pursue a professional career. 
Just one week after graduating high school, Mike Young would get on a plane, fly across the country to Los Angeles, and compete in NALCS. Not only was he a relatively unknown rookie with everything to prove, but because of his personal life, the pressure was immense. This was the only chance that he had, so you can imagine the anxiety and nerves he must have felt. That being said, this is how his career started. Then see that maybe they can catch P1. Mike Young is going in there, so that's a guy. Oh, kick back. Oh, oh. going to get pulled back in. Mike Young now in trouble, knocked up. But Zig is on the way to the back line. You may be keeping your eyes on Mike Young, but you need to watch that clan. Because he's going to try to find a kill on Mithy, but Mike Young is still, still alive. <gasps> Ryu now on a rampage. The Lee Sin getting out by the skin of his teeth. And G2, they're just going to get routed. He's got a team in here, a lot of chain CC, Mike Young showing up as well, but how much can they get on to Zig gonna land the javelin? Can he dodge flash? Oh! Beautiful out of Mike Young gets the heal as well. Zig now forced to run with two more autos will kill him off. Flash done, divide oh, some time, the Q to heal. The double go for Mike Young showing up in time and saving the day. The rookie with the big play. I'm gonna go to Mike okay. Young, gonna have to be the real hero. He's been good. Has he been amazing? He might be able to kill like Smithy oh, here. What is he doing? Kill him. Execute! Mike Young! Mike Young looking to steal away the Baron, but he's getting chunked. He has to be careful he with it. He needs to buy time because this is going to chunk them. He's going to kill Lele! Oh, oh yeah, he's going to get the kill. Mike Young, the savior! Leaps into the pit. Mike get the Baron! Leaps out of the way. To say that he started off with a bang is an understatement. Right away, he was a game changer. A lot of the time we see pros, both in esports and real sports, play conservatively when they are rookies. You might as well not play super risky. You need to learn slowly and attempt to be more of a role player while you can take it in step by step and learn the dynamics of the league. But for Mike Young, he did the opposite. He left it all out on the rift. He would consistently lock in Lee Sin in Nidalee, two of the hardest champions in the game to play, carry champions that require immense game knowledge and mechanical skill to pull off, and he would wreck the competition. He would frequently be the subject of memes among the community, and while at first that might sound bad, it was actually kind of a good thing. The memes would play on the fact that he uses his real name as his tag, and when written, the redundancy can be quite funny. Mike, Mike Young Young kinda sounds funny, but often the meme also resulted in nothing but compliments to him. Was this the jungler that everyone had been waiting for? A prodigy that would live out an awesome career in professional gaming? Well. No, not quite. You see, his team, Phoenix One, sucked. Through almost no fault of his own, Mike Young would find himself in last place in NALCS, meaning that no, he would not get a shot to compete at another international tournament. However, his domestic gameplay would earn him Rookie of the Split, solidifying his place as the best prospect in the region. He was the future of jungling, and now all he needed was a good team. Turns out that Reginald, the owner of TSM, thought this too. In what could only be described as a massive move, Mike Young would sign with North American organization TSM. For those who don't know, despite their recent failures in 2020, at the time TSM was essentially the equivalent of the New York Yankees or Dallas Cowboys, a team that everybody wants to play for. It's a fan favorite organization, one that has massive success in multiple different esports, and the brand is right up there with Cloud9 in terms of global recognition. Which of course is a pretty big upgrade from Phoenix. One. This was finally his time to be the player we all expect of him. Interestingly, but also unfortunately, this is where the good part of the story ends for Mike. His time on TSM can be described as disappointing, underwhelming, or even just kinda sad that he didn't live up to expectations. Now, to be fair, there is a phenomenon known to the League of Legends community that for whatever reason, TSM seems to always ruin their junglers. Players like Santorin, Svenskeren, Mike Young, Grig, and now even Dardoch to some extent, have all seen some noticeable decline in their play while they continue to play for TSM. 
There is obviously a lot of speculation as to what causes this to happen, whether it's a lack of good coaching, a misuse of a player's talent, or just the fact that everybody knows the pressure of being a TSM jungler is so high that it becomes really easy to crack. It feels like the job security of a TSM jungler is right up there with Hogwarts defense against the dark arts teachers. You know that everybody will be watching you. All eyes are on you. This is the most popular team in North American League of Legends, and everybody knows about the jungle curse now, so it just feels like people are waiting for you to eventually fall apart. Whenever we do these interviews, you are so like, you seem like so zen, you know? But I assume there is a lot of pressure on you, a lot of people flaming you over the course of the split, and. Yeah and betting on you, and, and as you just said, you felt like it was on you to make sure that TSM could make it to playoffs. Uh, does that, did that get to you at any point in time, or are you just like, oh man, I need this to stop? Yeah, that's that's a good point, because this, this week was probably the hardest week for me, personally, because I was overworking myself for the previous, like, um, like Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. I want to ask you a little bit about your play style. The last time that I spoke with you, you told me that you were playing with no regrets. Are you still working with that? And how's that working for you? Uh, I actually got a little bit lost with my play style when, like, for the past few weeks, I kind of, like, lost my identity. I kind of was trying to, like, try too much to be, you know, like, no mistakes, trying to play vision control, objective control, playing, you know, for the team. But I felt that that's not always the best way to play. You just have to play. Sometimes you just have to play with the feel. For Mike Young, I believe one of these factors to be most true, which is the misuse of his talent. The fact is, Mike Young was very obviously not a supportive style jungler. Throughout the many years of League of Legends, jungler champions like Nunu, Sejuani, Gragas, and Ivern are all used in competitive play to be focused on helping your team, tanking and soaking up damage, being the front line during fights, and initiating fights as well. What's interesting is that this role is drastically different than the style that is most commonly used in solo queue ranked play. Pretty much, in solo queue, the game that all of us non-pros play every single day, junglers will instead gravitate towards a carry style. Champions like Lee Sin, Kha'Zix, Nidalee, and Graves. The solo queue carry style takes arguably quite a bit more skill than playing the tanks, but more often than not, you have a great amount of agency on the game. You will be able to carry your team and be a focal point for why your team won. Early on in Mike Young's career, if you notice, all of these highlight plays are on carry junglers. His Lee Sin and Nidalee were the champions that made him famous. When he played with no fear, no hesitation, when Mike Young was being the solo queue Mike Young out there on the stage, he was dominant and had nothing to lose. While it's true that flashy champions are more likely to be in a montage, to be fair, but plenty of other professional junglers have had highlights on tanks as well. I Will Dominate's Gragas flash play and Meteos' 5-man Sejuani ultimate are some of the best plays ever made by junglers, and this style is incredibly important for the competitive scene. But this was not the strength of Mike Young. For his career, from 2017 until now, still his best champion, by far statistically, is Nidalee. In 11 games of Nidalee, he's won 82% of them, with a KDA of 6.2. In 21 games of Lee Sin, his most played champion, he's won 52% of those games with a KDA of 4.1. He's also performed quite well on Nocturne and Xinzao. However, for his poor performances, for his career, he is 1 win and 10 losses on Jarvan. In 7 games of Gragas, he has a 43% win rate. In 12 games of Elise, he has a 42% win rate. And his win rate on Zac, Trundle, and Olaf aren't the best either. The champion pool problem and the misuse of his talent was a big thing, but I don't think that was the main turning point, because that came during the 2018 Spring Playoffs. Up until this point, TSM had never missed a finals. The finals of the NALCS had always been TSM against another team. Their reputation of always making miraculous things happen in the playoffs allowed them to come out ahead in a five-game series. 
TSM found themselves in a series versus Clutch Gaming, who was a new team to the LCS. They saw themselves as a favorite despite a pretty below average regular season for their standards. After all, they've never missed the finals, so this quarterfinals matchup should be an easy win for them. In the first game, nothing too crazy happened, pretty standard stuff, and in fact Mike Young would get the first kill of the series. Things were looking pretty good for TSM, and it seemed like they would wrap this thing up 3 wins to 0, maybe at worst they'll drop 1 game. But after starting off 1-0 in the series, disaster struck. Not been performing against Bjerg. Lyra invading towards Mike Young now. Lyra's got oh. the ability to take him down. Mike has no summoner spell oh. and he is caught out. Lyra makes the play. That is for game one. He's secure. looking for the member move, not able to find it on the Bjergsen. Oh. But the death sentence! Hakuo is a freaking monster and this game. End. And here's the Olaf oh. Nicely done by Hakuo. The oh, shockwave over the wall and Mike Young's got no way out. First blood over the Feminine. Oh my goodness. Gets himself out, Redemption oh comes down, my. keep it all topped off, but Abyssal Voyage into the back line. Smithy having to immediately flash away, leaves Mike Young in a bad spot, and he is gone. Clutch Gaming gets himself one, and the attack now reverses direction. They're going in and out of there. They're also going to find the kill on the Haunter. Oh, but the Bibbin says never move as Mike Young's now finding himself caught out of position. It's Hakuo, Febby, and Lyra closing in. The stun from downtown, Apollo off the screen, facilitating these plays. And Febbin, true to his words, will end them today. TSM routed the game over. And that is the end of this series and the end of TSM's perfect record of attending the playoff finals. Clutch Gaming will be the first organization to deny them their pass to the semis and will earn their spot in Miami. Not only did TSM lose, but they were completely blasted. In the final three games where they lost all of them in a row, the bot lane of Sven and Mithy did play bad, but Mike Young probably had the worst series of them all. After such a strong game one, it was clear that Lyra had his number that day. Ever since then, it feels like Mike Young lost a big part of his confidence. The once fired up rookie with nothing to lose, now once again had everything to prove. TSM as a whole had a lot to prove too, but their struggles would continue. TSM would fail to qualify for Worlds in 2018, and that was of course the first time they had ever missed the tournament. From a dominant, a favorite to win it all domestically, and as an org that many thought would finally have a chance to go far, very similar to how in that very same year, Cloud9 made the final four at the World Championship, to now TSM being a middle of the pack, slightly below average team in the NALCS. TSM towards the end of the year in 2018 would choose to stick with Grig in the jungle for the rest of the year, moving Mike Young down to their academy roster. After leaving TSM for the start of 2019, he would be on Team Liquid's academy team, where he played reasonably well in the academy league. He even got another shot at the LCS level last summer, Echo Fox needed a jungler, and they brought in Mike Young to hopefully turn some things around, to maybe spark some of that old Phoenix One magic, but unfortunately, it didn't go well. For his time on Echo Fox, the team had a 2-8 record with him as the starting jungler. Mike has now returned to the Team Liquid Academy team, where the team is struggling, but after starting 0-5, they did just pick up their first win last week, so I wish them nothing but the best of luck, and Mike on his endeavors to become an LCS starter once again. It's easy to ask yourself at the end of this story, why does any of this matter? Who cares? 
I mean, if Mike Young didn't live up to the initial hype, he wouldn't be the only player in any sport or esport that's done that before. Plenty of people have been overhyped. There are plenty of draft busts that we know about. One of the most famous busts ever, which was Ryan Leaf, has been the subject of hundreds of studies, articles, and subsequent debates following the amazing story between picking him or Peyton Manning. But the difference there is that guys like Ryan Leaf or Jamarcus Russell, who were NFL players with huge expectations, who were signed for millions and millions in their contracts, simply never lived up to what was expected of them. They never even had one good season. They were never good. Jamarcus Russell was so bad that he told NFL teams he would literally play for free and nobody wanted him. Seriously. Mike Young was someone who obviously has immense skill at this game, a 13-year-old challenger player, to then come onto the scene as a relatively unknown guy and destroy the competition. He did have a great season. He did win Rookie of the Split. None of those draft busts in real sports ever did anything like that. Mike Young has it in him, but he's one of those living examples that skill isn't everything mentality, confidence, and being able to properly control fame and success to not let it overcome you and get to your head is clearly just as important as being good enough to compete because Mike Young is good enough to be a very good LCS jungler. He proved that back in 2017, but he finds himself struggling due to factors that we really can't understand or measure. Regardless, I wish nothing but the best for Mike Young. It's easy to forget that he's only 20 years old, so there is plenty of time for him to figure out whatever he needs to do, keep practicing, and become a great player once again. He's in good hands. I've personally been to the Team Liquid training facility, so I know that anything is possible. I know that a turnaround in his career is definitely something to look out for. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe. As always, just clicking that little like button and interacting with the video really helps me out a lot more than you might think. And of course, I will see you all next time.